Welcome to the MLA Citation Workshop. During this time, we will have a brief overview of MLA. We won't be able to cover everything, uh, but the objective will be to understand the structure of MLA papers, how the citation system works, the information source elements needed to create an MLA citation, and why citation is so important. My name is Betty Rue. I'm a librarian at Lone Star College, University Park. Let's get started. So the purpose of citation. Uh, well, citation gives credit to the original creator of ideas or words from an information source. That source could be a book, a website, an article. Uh, it could even be um, from a Twitter account. Um, the citation protects you, the writer, from plagiarism as you use that information that you've learned and placed it inside your um, writing. And with that uh, citation, your writing uh, has credibility because you're using the ideas and the words of authorities in a discipline or experts on a topic uh, to support your statements. And lastly, citation allows others to learn more from that original source by tracking uh, through uh, the address that a citation um, gives in order to find that article or that book. The major paper components of an MLA paper, well, are the paper itself. Uh, and then the very last page is your works cited page. Uh, there is no cover sheet. In fact, that first page um, has a header uh, contained within it, and then you double space and be, you begin the title of your paper. So um, it, the, the components, um, two major components, the paper and the works cited page. Uh, we do have an MLA paper template that is programmed to um, have the right header placement, um, the right um, page numbers uh, in the um, upper right hand corner, the margins, the spacing, the font, and so forth. And that last page is the um, works cited page programmed with that hanging indent in between each one of your citations. Uh, you'll find that paper template at the address shown here and there's a preview on the next slide. You can see the um, URL one more time so that you can grab that. Um, in fact, you can take a peek at it if you like while I'm talking about the contents of that MLA guide. Um, I want you to be sure and realize that, that where the template is. Um, it is seen on uh, this view as the very first uh, downloadable piece of content. And then further down you have some other uh, normally uh, library handouts uh, which are quite helpful as well. Uh, so the template, you click on uh, the hyperlink and the uh, document will download onto your device. And as it opens up, uh, you'll see that there are placeholders of waiting for your content to be typed right over uh, in those areas. Um, over on the left hand side, you can see uh, that there are tabs for you to look at um, the proper uh, citation for an article or a book or a video and so forth. So at some point, take some time to um, pre preview um, this guide um, and then when you have questions, you'll have uh, a resource that you can do go to quite quickly. Um, um, you can see that the basic citation anatomy is shown here, uh, both the full citation that goes on your Works Cited page and um, the in-text. And so there are a couple of um, articles here that have been um, fully cited. Um, the, the author's uh, last name comes first, you'll notice that, and then if there are other authors, uh, it's first name, last name. Um, 
but you can see uh, that this one is coming out of a database and the second one is coming off of the website for the Houston Chronicle. And then there's a hanging indent uh, that uh, is in between each citation. Uh, you can see that on this slide. And then the end text for this first article by Scarantino and Nielsen, uh, you can see an example of the end text, which be begins with the parenthesis, and then you have the author's last names um, with an and, A-N-D, in between. Uh, no comma, uh, the number is the page number. Okay, so that is the anatomy of that end text, and it falls right inside your paper at the point where you use information from Scaratino and Nielsen's article. And again, you can see those two components a little bit uh, closer up. Uh, you have the full citation. That first line is left aligned with the author's name. Um, and then the following lines that compose that full citation are indented 0.5. Uh, and then you have the, the match in in text uh, for this article uh, shown at the bottom with the author's name and page number. Um, if you have a works cited um, citation, then you must have that in text citation somewhere in your paper. And if you have an in text citation, you must have a corresponding article on your works cited page. Um, and this slide uh, it represents a student's paper. You can see up here at the top the uh, student's last name and the uh, page number consecutively uh, numbered as you go through your paper. And each time there is information from an outside source, um, from an article or from a newspaper, whatever that source may be, um, you can see uh, that the the uh, citation, the in-text citation, has some uh, different um, different compositions. Um, a narrative citation you can see here with the author's name actually inside the sentence used as part of the sentence. And if you have a narrative citation, then before you end that sentence, you in the parentheses will simply place the page number where Abbott said um, that uh, or wrote that piece of information and then a citation here and a citation further down and just a snippet over here of the works cited page uh, where you can see uh, the very first citation Abbott and how uh, a person would go from your in-text citation over to the works cited page and be able to find more from that article um, that is for your professor's use at this point or if someone's reading your paper and wants to find out more they know exactly where to go. And another shot of the um, same operation here where you have inside your paper uh, you have the in-text citation and then you have the author's names. Uh, you notice them and then you go to your works cited page and you're able to find uh, where that piece of information came from. So uh, they work together. If you have one you have to have the other um, and they give each other meaning and context. When you're using information from your sources, you're going to either use direct quotes, that's the exact words from the source, and if you do that, you're going to have those quotation marks around those pe that, that sentence or that uh, piece of information, um, followed by the in-text citation and the page number is included there. Or maybe you're going to paraphrase. You're going to read the same information but you're going to decide to use your own words and that's really the best way to do it unless your professor says otherwise. Sometimes some assignments, direct quotes, are very important. Uh, but paraphrasing in other courses you're going to find that there's a bigger emphasis and um, placed on paraphrasing and that's when you read the information and you compose it so that you're saying in your own words that idea or uh, that information always followed by your in-text. 
how do you create those citations? Um, well, the citations, uh, the pieces of information uh, that you'll need to pull from your sources can be seen here on the left-hand side. There is an article inside of one of our databases, um, Credo Reference, and it's actually um, a bit of a biography on Ernest Hemingway. And we're going to apply what you know at this point. Uh, with a survey that begins on a couple of slides um, from here. Uh, you will uh, follow step by step uh, the, the process to make an MLA citation for, for that uh, Ernest Hemingway article. Um, and always uh, on, on the, the, this uh, survey that, or this exercise rather, that we're asking of you at this point. Um, we um, have a text and um, that you can send questions to and we also have an email address where that you can send any questions that you might have. Let me just say that many professors give extra points uh, for participation. Uh, and attendance as at this workshop and we'll be sure that you have evidence verification that you've gone through this practice so that you're eligible for um, those extra points. Uh, now this last slide, um, a link to the interactive MLA template which will uh, step by step um, help you uh, pull out the information that you need for this Hemingway article. Now the Hemingway article, the link will take you to the PDF um, for uh, the article um, that appears in Credo. Um, the link um, if you have any questions, uh, the chat button is also a way to connect yourself to a librarian. And uh, the next page, and on this page is the MLA citation practice that begins. Thank you. Uh, this should take uh, maybe 10-15 minutes. Um, and like I said, if you have any questions, uh, let us know.